Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back in to DNews Plus. This is episode two of five in our marijuana series, brand new this week. Where does this stuff come from? That was yesterday's episode. Today, we're gonna talk about what it's doing to your brain. Why does it get you high? Tomorrow and the next day and the next day, we're gonna get into more stuff on marijuana. So if you haven't subscribed already to DNews Plus, click on the little subscribe button. It's right there, it's so easy, easy to find. But now that you know where this crazy plant comes from, let's talk about what happens when you put it in your body. THC, or Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, is the chemical inside of the plant, cannabis, that gets you high. It was discovered in the 1960s, and it was one of the main active ingredients of marijuana. But it wasn't until 20 years later that we started to understand what the THC was actually doing to you. But there's also this other chemical inside of the plant. There's actually more than 100 other chemicals, but that doesn't matter. This other one is also really important. It's called CBD or cannabidiol. And that one produces little or no effect when smoked or ingested. And those two chemicals work together in a kind of a balance. If there's a lot of THC, that plant is going to get you high. If there's a lot of cannabidiol, it's not going to get you high. So that's, those are the two most important ones that you should remember. Besides the obvious dopamine dump, from THC stimulating dopamine neurons in the brain, what is it doing to you? And I say obvious because that's pretty much how all drugs work. They release dopamine to make you feel good. And they do that at a rate that's so high that it can't be replicated in a natural setting. They have to do it with this drug. Tons of other effects actually come from THC other than that dopamine that makes you feel good though. And they affect what's called the endocannabinoid system, which is part of your body. And this gets complex really, really fast. So let's look at the neurons, brain cells inside of your body and how they communicate with each other. THC affects that. The chemicals that are transferred between two neurons right at the ends of their cells are known as neurotransmitters. You've probably heard of these before. They're super cool. The two neurons that they're transferring between have a presynaptic and postsynaptic connection. Those are basically the two ends. Think of it as a train car, right? You've got two cars next to each other with a little gap in between. That's called the synaptic gap. So if you're going from one car to the next, you go from a presynaptic to a postsynaptic. So when the neurotransmitters move from one car to the next, they're moving across that synaptic gap and they're activating receptors. The receptors set off a series of events that allow the message to go from one cell to the next. And this happens throughout your brain all the time. It gets complicated, like I said, it's a whole process. And what happens is when you ingest THC, it affects how these receptors work, which can affect all sorts of things. So our body naturally makes chemicals or neurotransmitters that help moderate this reaction or this interaction between those two neurons. Anandamide and 2-AG, also known as a pronunciation that I can't go with, and that's 2 arachidonol gliss. I don't know what it is. It's complicated. These chemicals are known collectively as cannabinoids, and they act on the cannabinoid receptors in the presynaptic neuron. So that's the first car. When you smoke weed, instead of the natural chemicals attaching to those receptors, the things your body actually makes to you know, moderate these interactions, the THC jumps in there. The anandamide and the THC have extremely similar structures as molecules. So the body allows it to attach to the receptor and that throws the whole system off. Since cannabinoids regulate how cells communicate, once the THC gets in there, your communication system inside of your brain sort of freaks out. It's messing with the natural ability of your brain to send messages across your brain cells. The EC system is basically in a bunch of different areas of our brains, which is why there are so many different effects when people ingest THC. Depending on where the THC hits in your brain, you're gonna get a different affected system. So let me list a few. If the THC hits your hypothalamus, you're gonna have an issue with your appetite and your hormonal levels, so you're gonna get hungry. If it hits the basal ganglia, you're gonna have issues with motor control. It might make it hard to move and your reactions might be slowed down. If it hits the nucleus accumbens, it's gonna regulate your feelings of reward. You're gonna feel euphoria. If it hits the amygdala, you might have people getting paranoid because they'll end up 
feeling fear. The amygdala is the emotional center of the brain. If it hits your neocortex, this is higher cognitive functions and cognitive thinking. You might have altered judgment. If it hits the hippocampus, that's the memory section of your brain, you're going to have a hard time focusing and forming memories. So, so on and so forth. There's so much it can affect, and there are so many different systems, and it will do little different things to all of them. There are different ways to get the THC all the way into your synapses, however, right? Some people eat it, some people smoke it, you can do all sorts of stuff. And they have different reasons for doing those things because of the way the THC will affect your body and the speed it will do so. And it all really has to do with the blood or more specifically how it gets into the blood and then moves into the brain. According to Kerry Franson, who is a clinical pharmacologist and associate dean for professional education at the Department of Clinical Pharmacy, the University of Colorado Skag School of Pharmacy, it's a long title, Kerry, but you're great. She says, once it's in the blood, it quickly goes to and has an effect on the brain. When you smoke marijuana, peak blood levels happen within three to 10 minutes, but when you eat, an edible, it's one to three hours. So it's a lot slower. Smoking allows 50 to 60% of the THC in the blood plasma. That's the highest concentrations. And it can hit you really fast within three and 10 minutes. However, eating is a much slower high. You're gonna get 10 to 20% of the THC into the blood plasma. It'll happen between one and three hours after you eat the thing. It's a lot easier to eat too much THC than it is to smoke too much, just because of the speed that it's gonna hit you. And you're gonna feel the effects of smoking, I mean, three minutes, that's almost immediately. The thing that a lot of people wonder, however, and kind of feel in their gut, no pun intended, is that eating, you know, ingesting edibles has a stronger high, but that's not really true. You get less of a THC concentration in your blood, however, it hits you slower and lasts longer. More research is needed on this, but here's what we know. It has to do with the chemical structure of the THC molecule. According to professor of psychology at the State University of New York at Albany and the author of Understanding Marijuana, his name is Mitch Erlewine, quote, in a nutshell, eaten cannabis gets metabolized by the liver. So the delta-9 THC becomes 11-hydroxy-THC, a slightly different molecule, which passes the blood-brain barrier more rapidly and has more of a psychedelic effect than regular old THC. Smoked or vaporized cannabis, it bypasses the liver. It doesn't go through your digestive system. It goes in through your lungs. So it doesn't create that 11-hydroxy-THC. This isn't to say that that is, again, stronger, it's just different, and it lasts a little longer. People feel like it's stronger because they're high for hours <laughs> instead of feeling a high really quickly and then having it taper off. So the question everyone has on their minds, and some people know or think they know, is how long then does it stay in your body? That's a great question for some people, <laughs> but it does depend because it depends on how much you smoked and it also depends on the strain of the plant that you've smoked. THC is stored in the fat cells in your body. So it takes longer to clear than something like alcohol, which is metabolized and disappears. According to the National Health Service, using data from the US National Drug Court Institute, first time marijuana users could be clean after only a few days, like four days. But more frequent users, it might migrate into the fat cells and stay there for say 10 days. Heavy users, it could be months and you could still detect it inside of the body. THC is a super interesting chemical, and obviously more things need to be looked into for this chemical, and we need to understand a lot more about it. So make sure you tune in tomorrow to learn what happens when THC goes into your body and whether it is bad for you. I'm sure you have an opinion on that. Tell us down in the comments before you leave. And also, we do wanna hear from you guys. We're gonna try out this new thing. We're gonna research and write our series on sharks coming up really soon, and we wanna know what you all wanna know about sharks. Cause I don't know if you know this, but D News, the D stands for discovery, and Shark Week is coming up. So, spoiler alert, we're gonna talk about sharks that week. <laughs> so tweet at us using the hashtag DNews Plus with any and all questions that you have about sharks, and I mean any and all. Really big questions, really small questions, and we will try and put them into our series coming up for Shark Week. Thanks so much for tuning in to D News Plus this week. I'm Trace. You can find me over on Twitter at Trace Dominguez, and you can also find the show at D News. Thanks for watching.